A madness happens in March, and that's not just reserved for the basketball floor. A snowy hot springs is the scene as we welcome you inside Bank OZK Arena. Bobby Swafford here to get you set for the two-A girls state championship game. Before we get you to courtside, let's find out what's happening earlier today as the 1A state championships were decided. We start with the girls as Norfolk was taken on Mammoth Spring and this one back and forth from the start as the Lady Bears and Lady Panthers duked it out, traded buckets for three quarters, but in the fourth corner it was Norfolk who went on a huge 14-4 run that helped separate themselves from Mammoth Spring as Norfolk captured their first ever state championship. Kylie Allman was the difference as she knocked down five three-pointers, finished six of 11 from the field, a game-high 22 points, and she takes home the game's most valuable player as Norfolk picks up the five-point victory. In the guys' game, well, there was plenty of drama to be had as County Line took on Bradley. The Indians were looking for their first state championship, first time they've been to Hot Springs since 1971, and it came down to the wire. County Line led it for the duration, but the three-point shot helped the Bears get back into the contest, and with five seconds left, Tyrese Harris, a freshman for the Bradley Bears, knocked down a three. County line had a final chance at it, but their three fell well short, and the Bradley Bears posted a 44-41 victory to earn the state title. Colby West picked up the game's most valuable player. He went six of 10 from the field, finished with 14 points, and the 6'5 senior got himself a title for the Bradley Bears. So we're going to get you courtside in just a moment as the 2A state championships are coming up. Stick around as you're watching the Centennial Bank State Basketball Championships right here on Arkansas PBS. This month in Passport on the PBS video app. Fasten your seatbelt. I'm descended from mystery. I didn't know what we were. We're going to find out. Vintage Hot Springs. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Dutch Schultz starts making an unbelievable amount of money. And that money is said to be buried in upstate New York. These and other shows from Arkansas PBS are available with Passport on the PBS video app. You know, I think sports are really big to a lot of people. And because it's an important part of our fabric in our community, and the one good thing about what I've seen is it's high quality production. You know, you think of the small communities all over Arkansas, it's a big deal that they can turn on the TV or DVR or whatever and know they're gonna get a quality product. And so I think it just expands the, uh, the focus of what PBS is doing. You know, Arkansas PBS is doing a great job and, and I think it's part of education. Thanks, George, appreciate it. At Big Red Stores, we're always proud to sponsor, support, and partner up with many events and activities throughout the community. Among them, high school championships throughout the state of Arkansas. At Big Red Stores, our team members are always ready to assist you to make your visit with us a pleasant one. And at Big Red Stores, we recognize that none of our support or ability to serve the community is possible without you. That's why, at Big Red Stores, you're always the MVP of the Big Red team. Big Red Stores, now more convenient than ever. No. Welcome into Bank OZK Arena. We got that 2 way girls state championship game getting ready to tip off Bigelow, Melbourne. Hello, everybody. I'm Wes Moore. Glad you were with us. Joined by Michael Westbrook, courtside to watch this 2 way girls game. And Michael, this is David and Goliath. I'll go ahead and say it because Coach Luke Cornett from Bigelow told me that, and that's the way they're looking at it. They're David going up against Goliath. Melbourne, perfect this season, unbeatable so far. Absolutely, 34-0 for Melbourne, and they are led by Kinley McCorn. Her younger sister's on the team as well, but she averages 21 and a half points a game, shoots nearly 90% at the free throw line. She's going to bring down six, seven, eight rebounds a game as well. Kinley McCorn makes this team go for Melbourne. Year after year, they reload. They are a dominant team. And on the other side, Aubrey Evans, she's a 20-point scorer as well, Wes, so we've got some two high-powered offenses and some star power out there with the two stars of each of these teams. Coach Cornette was hoping his taller squad could give Melbourne some problems, give them some issues, and he said that's been the key for them. They've uh, just had their two big post players come on at the end, and they've been uh, 
getting a lot of attention, and that's opened up some outside shots for their shooters, and their shooters have been making baskets, and that's how they got to the state finals. Here we go, tip off is set, Melbourne. Well, they had it for a second briefly, but Bigelow wins the tip, they'll have the first possession. We're gonna see some very tenacious defense out of Melbourne. Already seeing it right there. They're picking up full court or half court man to man, but they're all over Bigelow. And there's the first turnover of the game. That's that tough, tenacious pressure on defense. Myra Willingham could not hold on to it. You're right. A lot of good defense for Melbourne. You have to be able to be good on offense and defense to have an undefeated record at this point. If people want to talk about Melbourne's offense, but Coach Cornett, he just kept going on and on about their defense and how good it is. Skidmore turned down an open three, and well, there's Bigelow. They're getting in on it on the defensive side. Bigelow fans behind us thought that was should have been their ball, but they're not. Our officials tonight, a referee, Robert Stewart. We got Keith Wells and Joe Sloan also working the game. Bigelow in man-to-man -man defense. Had a little breakdown in the defense, and Left the three-point shooter wide open, but it was the offensive rebound that gave Bigelow some problems. And Kaylee Love, I got to talk to Coach Teague about her. He said she didn't play a lot last year. All of a sudden this year, she has really blossomed into a really, really good player, second leading scorer on the team. By the way, you're seeing Bigelow just having a difficult time getting into their offense. Point guards getting hounded. Got a nice screen there. She'll get to the basket, no good. First shot of the game is no good for Bigelow. He is for Willingham to be able to get to the rim, cause some havoc. Quarter three rattles out. But Melbourne there for the offensive rebound. Kindley McCarn, hustle play. McCarn with it up top, she'll take a three. Off the back of the rim. Once again, Bigelow cannot get the offense or the defensive rebound. Melbourne still at work. They'll drive in, take another three. Little long, another offensive rebound for Melbourne. This time cutting to the basket, flying in is Kinley McCarn. All over the court, the Bearcats were swarming to the basketball for the offensive rebounds. You can be successful when you get four looks at the rim on each possession. You can't do that. If you're the underdog, you can't allow, you get that first shot, you're happy they finally miss a shot you got to get the rebound to finish off that possession. Might not have a good shooting percentage, but <laughs> still got two by the time it was all said and done. Its possession will look really good for Melbourne because they scored every time getting their own rebound. Sometimes they work it down low, get a good look at the basket, and they get the offensive rebound. So Bigelow gets on the board because of Allison Weaver hitting the glass. Hard. Drives in, kicks it back out. That opens up. McCarn, Caitlin McCarn. That time Bigelow gets the rebound. The younger sister averaging seven points a game. They know where the three-point line is at, don't they? We're going to see a lot of three points from the Bearcats, Lady Bearcats. Well, they've already taken five. Bigelow going inside. Great pass. That is a, just a wonderful assist. And that's the two players you got to watch for Bigelow. And they hooked up. Jenna Starks and Myra Willingham. Great passing. Melbourne working it around the perimeter. Karn with it. Love didn't want it. Skidmore dribbles around, throws it away. Bigelow gets it. Allison Weaver listed at 5'10", seems to be a little bit taller out there. Her hand's up in the air, she can get her hand on the basketball. Starks with it, she was looking inside. They get it inside. Great job of working it inside out, open three, no good. This has been a good start for both teams to find the open player when they get double teamed. Both teams have done a good job at that. But Evans did a great job of catching the entry pass, but then just keeping her wits about her and finding the open player. There's an open player in the corner. She doesn't want the shot, drive and kick. Big low fans on their feet. They're happy about this defense, working inside. Nice post move. Good defense from Bigelow. Jenna Starks, keeping her hands straight up. Starks with it outside. 
Starks kind of forces it. Yep, throws it away. Dangerous pass there. Starks and Evans, they want to get that ball down low. That time they tried a little too hard. We're at the first media timeout all tied. 4-4, Bangalore, Melbourne. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. It's natural to be concerned with our kids' safety, but when they're riding the school bus, we shouldn't have to be. Illegally passing a school bus puts our children's lives at risk. That's why Everett is joining area schools to promote the Flashing Red Kids Ahead Safety Program. School bus safety is everyone's responsibility. Do your part. Always stop when you see the flashing red lights of a school bus. Children's lives depend on it. Remember, flashing red, kids ahead. There's well over 2,000 Arkansas rice farms. 96% of them are family owned and operated. It's all about building community. The results we've been seeing have been very promising. I grew up watching the farm, knowing every detail about it. If you take care of the soil, the soil will take care of you. It helps us to give back to the land and make sure that it's going to be there for future generations. Every community has a story to tell, and if somebody will tell it, it'll be interesting. Celebrate game day under the arches. Access to tons of benefits through our rewards program are available today on the McDonald's app. We're loving it. Well, Melbourne jumped out, scored the game's first four points, and Bigelow fights back. We're all tied 4-4 after the first media timeout. Melbourne with the ball. Give it to Get it inside. I thought they uh, had a chance to find Kaylee Love. Good three right there from Melbourne. That's their first three of the game. Well, so many possessions going inside to uh, the younger sister, Caitlin McCorn, and then Kinley McCorn had enough separation, took the three, knocked it down. See Melbourne, just how much they're pounding Bigelow's point guard. She finally breaks through, oh, over pursuing, and she was able to get past the defender, get to the basket. So now Bigelow will get to the free throw line. Myra Willingham has a chance to get on the scoreboard. See the replay, able to take her defender on the drive, splits past two defenders to at least get a chance at the rim. Ashton Kimball was called for the foul. Here comes Kinley McCarn with it. Throws it ahead. Fake the three. Gets the defender beat. And look at this. Link coming to play for Aubrey Evans. Just takes it away with the block. One of the things Coach Cornette said, their length gets the team's problem offensively and defensively. I can, yeah, I can see that now. Great defensive pressure. I'm tired. Well, they got a screen, and then when the screen came, they double teamed her and lost the ball. Jump ball, Melbourne's ball. Just watching them out there will wear you down. <laughs> they are all over the place on defense, and really, Bigelow's done a good job on defense as well so far. Caitlin McCarn back into the game. McCarn to McCarn. Ooh, she almost shot it. She almost pulled the trigger. She what? was open. I think if you had a shot clock, they'd take shots a little faster. That's a good, uh, good defensive rebound that time for Bigelow. Melbourne dominated the glass to start this game, but Bigelow's done a better job of getting the defensive rebound. That's Emma Wilson that just checked in. A hard time getting it inside. Finally, they do, but the shot is blocked. Bigelow will keep it. And they'll throw it in from underneath the basket. I'll tell you, Wes, this offense, to be on the wing and to throw across the paint, they're doing that a lot. That's a dangerous pass to make, but they do it pretty well. That's a dangerous pass right there that was stolen. McCarn with it. Faked it like she's going to pull up, stops at 15 feet, rattles out. Bigelow with the defensive rebound, and that's what they got to get. They got to fight for those boards. Emma Wilson got that one. Hernandez, or I'm sorry, Willingham is bringing it down and another turnover. The card, hard to the basket, all the way. Shot no good. Bigelow with the rebound, doing a much better job. Jenna Starks with it. Get 
Double comes. We're going to have to get it. Cannot find the loose ball. Here comes McCarn. Corner shot open. Knocks it down. Ashton Kimball. A great job on defense by McCarn to keep her dribble alive near half court through all the traffic and to set up that offensive play. That's exactly what Coach Kimball was worried about, that defensive pressure. Get an open look at it. Banks it in. Ira Willingham beat the double team, pulls up from 15, knocks it down. Last possession of the first quarter here for Melbourne. Karn with it. She's got an eye on the clock. Ten seconds to go. She wants a screen. She gets it. Let's it fly. Bang! McCarn with the way to end the first quarter. Melbourne 13, Bigelow 7. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. Broadcast of this championship game is made possible by the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Over 2,500 team members across 17 local electric distribution co-ops powering homes, farms, and industries somewhere across Arkansas. We are the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Power and people. Farmers and Merchants Bank and the Bank of Fayetteville share the mission of Arkansas PBS to enrich and empower all Arkansans. Community, dignity, respect. That's what me banking is all about. More at mebanking.com. It's now a session. Love watching the state finals on Arkansas PBS. Text sports to 501-491-0444 to support our coverage with a $10 donation. He's Michael Westbrook. I'm Wes Moore to a state championship game between Bigelow and Melbourne. Melbourne with the uh, first quarter lead. Melbourne defense been pretty much the difference in this game in the first half. Six turnovers for Bigelow in that first quarter. You can just see how tenacious that defense is. Get an open look, 15-footer, free throw, nine, that's good. Didn't need to hit that, you're gonna have a chance. You get an open look like that, you gotta knock it down, Jenna Starks does. Melbourne's three of nine now from the three-point line. Here comes the defender. I mean, as soon as they catch it, they are there in her face. It's just some great defense from Caitlin McCarr. Willingham has her work cut out for her just to get the ball across across half court each time. It's almost like she gets rid of it. She can take a breath. Great backdoor cut. Sometimes you get that defense so much in your face. They're trying to intercept passes. You just do a little back cut, and that's exactly what Bigelow was able to do. A really great finish from Emma Wilson. Big two points there for Bigelow, and now a steal. Going back the other way. On the four. Had some numbers if she had looked up, but it's tough to do that. You're not used to always coming up with a steal like that and trying to do something in transition. You just see the speed of Melbourne also. You get a steal and you think, I'm going back the other way. They beat you down the court and take it away from you. Hey, get up on her. Get up on. Emma Wilson has it. A little fake. She's going to the basket. Better stop her. They do. Now she's looking for an open teammate, Evans. Evans will go all the way to the basket. Can't get it to fall. Melbourne up four. Looking for more. Hesitate. McCarn fakes a three to spin. Inside, out, no good. McCarn there with the rebound. We're gonna call a jump ball. Yep, had it tied up for just a second. But still, it's gonna be an extra possession here for the Lady Bearcats because of an offensive rebound. Remember, they had a possession in the first quarter, 
four looks at the rim before they scored. They're flying to the basketball on offense. Carnes wanting to get it inside. She almost got a five-second call, but they get it in just in time, and just in time to bail them out is Abby Lawrence. Lead up to four. Seven now after the three. The scoreboard's a little late. Really looking inside, just a bad pass, just an errant pass. I like the idea of trying to get it in to Jenna Starks, but just couldn't connect. I'll tell you, Bigelow really working the ball in the paint. Again, the contrast of the two teams here, Bigelow's going to the paint every time, and Melbourne's taking a ton of three-pointers. Not to say they won't work it inside, but again, they're all about the long ball in this first half. Starks and Evans have that size advantage, and they want to get it into them, but the defenders, the guards, are so tenacious that it's hard for them to even get the ball inside. No problem for Melbourne to get the ball inside. That's Haley Skidmore. I guess they heard me. They said, well, now we'll take it inside. What a pass. What a finish. They were 4 of 11 from the three-point line. That's a walk. The Melbourne fans wanted to travel the first time her foot moved, and then she moved again. Yeah, she hesitated there and just probably, you know, not used to carrying the ball up across half court, post player. Tough situation for her. McCarn down in the corner. They're going to work it inside. Good spin move. Fakes, double team. McCarn pulls it out, looks over at the coach. She's just going to take it all the way to the basket and get fouled. Keep an eye on Melbourne's coach. He's uh, making me laugh, Coach Teague over there. It's a good shot and a good move. He was still want more out of it. He didn't like uh, some of the screens or the lack of screens that she got from her teammates. Coming into the game on a 65-game winning streak, and I said, Coach, what kind of pressure is that? He said, well, you know, believe it or not, the last three or four games there hasn't been any pressure. Now, do you believe that? In the Get playoffs it. here, he Get said it. early in the year, yes. He said, now we're just playing basketball. Bigelow gets it across. So every time the player has the ball, the Melbourne defender is all over them. Here comes backside for the steal. Come on, Kylie. It's hard to even get the ball inside. But they finally do, and that's what Bigelow has to do. Just keep working it, get it inside the Starks. Evans, use that height advantage. And they've got to be that quick, too, because Melbourne's going to swarm them as soon as they catch the basketball. Card, go inside out. Be a little more, more patient last couple of trips. Screen that time, and she's going to let it fly. Once again, Bearcats get that loose ball. They throw it away. One of the few turnovers for Melbourne, just their third turnover of the game. So far, so good for them. They lead it 22-13. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. summer for Blueberry's Clubhouse. We'll see a whole new crop of friends for the very best adventures in Arkansas. That's phenomenal! Good work, friends! We did it! Blueberry's Clubhouse returns this summer, only on Arkansas PBS. For every moment, for every memory, from that first car to your first home, to your first child, and all the highs and lows that tomorrow might bring. For everything that matters most to you and your family, there's someone right around the corner dedicated to helping you protect what you love. Your local Farm Bureau Insurance agent. Farm Bureau Insurance. Real service, real people. We on that next level. Westmore, Michael Westbrook with you. You'll want to stick around for the halftime show. Got some great things coming your way. 
Rap Squad, Make Room for Pie, Arkansas Dairy Bars, The Glow, all that. Stick around for the halftime show. Bigelow with the ball. They're down by nine. Trying to get it in bounds, and they don't. It's going to be another turnover, another steal from Melbourne. That's been the story so far. You take a look at the uh, turnovers for Bigelow. They got nine turnovers. Make it ten after that one. Seven steals for Melbourne. And the big stat for you, points off turnovers. Melbourne has 14, Bigelow nothing. Wow. McCarn, jump shot, gets the shooter's roll. And Wes, you're mentioning the defense, Melbourne averaging on, 59 Andrew, points a game. They're only giving Stay up 31 there. points a game, Stay winning up. games by an average of 28 points. Bigelow finally gets it across Get half court. To the Starks. Double team, balls loose on the ground. Starks has it, gets tied up. Here comes Melbourne with it. Another steal. They don't have numbers, but McCard's there for a three. Bam. Kelly McCard lighting it up. She's already got 15 points. She has 15 of the 27. Incredible, she's beating Bigelow. Stay up on her. Another. Turnover for Bigelow. McCarr may be outscoring him, but the defense is beating Bigelow right now. It is. You know what? I, I talked to Coach Cornette right before the game, and that, that was the number one thing he was worried about. And it can't be that good. To myself, I'm thinking, yeah. well, it is. It is that good. It is. We're seeing it right here in person up close. Offensively, they're patient. Passing it around, corner three, no good. Bigelow gobbles up the rebound. Get up. Got to give it up to Emma Wilson. She's not the tallest player, but she's found a way to get some rebounds. Got to make your layups. Got to make those layups. That was Aubrey Evans, and she was mad at herself. She knows she, she has to make that. McCard's going to the basket, and she lets it fly and gets the touch off the glass. Timeout, Bigelow. They're in trouble. Down 16 with two minutes to go in the half, 158 to be exact. McCard is a player. They need that timeout when she can get the rebound and take it coast to coast. Nobody stepped up to stop her, and now she's up to 17 points on six of 11 shooting, three of five from long range, and she's two of two at the free throw line. McCard is 5'10". She, looks, she plays taller, I'll say that. She plays and looks a little taller. I like her game. This Bigelow team lost to Melbourne in the 2A Central Region Championship game, 44 to 21. So obviously it's two teams that are familiar with each other. And Bigelow knew what they were up against, having lost to them by 23 points just about a week ago. Yeah, Coach Gwinnett thought that the 44 points they held Melbourne to might have been the lowest or fewest points they scored all season. He said defensively we were okay. It was just. Offensively, we couldn't get into our offense, and you're, you're seeing it here once again. They do have 13 points, but good look at Coach Cordette on the bench. And it seems like Melbourne's kind of content to not score 60 or 70, even though they're on pace to have that performance because they've been very patient. The pass is inside. A lot of times players would turn and try to score. They're waiting, they're waiting, they're trying to find an open shot. They've been very patient on offense to get to their 29 they have right now. Evans. Getting the cross. She's being pounded by two players. They're gonna call a foul. It's the second foul for Melbourne. And I'll tell you, Wes, in a game like this that is as ferocious as it is on defense, to only have three combined fouls, that's pretty remarkable. Wilson she turns, gets double teamed. Trying to get it inside. We get a good look at it, but no good. Another jump ball. Bigelow will get another shot at it. They've gotten it inside a couple times now to Starks and to Evans, but they haven't been able to convert. Wilson with the little runner, floater no good. McCarn dishes it off, open three, no good. Big low gets that rebound. Willingham splits the defenders. Goes all the way to the basket and gets it to go. Her second basket of the game. 
strong move. If you're going to split two defenders, work that hard, you might as well take it yourself all the way to the rim and show them you can play. McCarn gets a screen. Open look at the top. Good. Melvin's starting to heat up. That's the other McCarn, Caitlin McCarn. You don't get too many looks that wide open, and she uh, calm, cool, collectively knocked it down. Evans double team, loses the ball. It's another turnover. Back court. <laughs> Elber making uh, some changes. Kaylee Law back into the game. See Laney Cornelius. She's coming back into the game. Kaylee's the one I was referencing a minute ago. She's really patient when she gets the basketball around the paint area and close to the rim. Of course, now here holding for the final shot of the third. Up 17. They can make it 20 with a three. 19 with the two. Bingo just sitting back. They need to get a stop here. Coach is talking to him about the screen. Sure enough, they get the screen, use the screen. McCard. Three seconds, underhand flip, no good. Bigelow with the rebound, time will expire. But Melbourne leading it 32-15. We'll look at some of the first half stats when we come back. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. I'm about to get my COVID-19 shot. I'm a school teacher. And so I just feel like it's my civil duty to get vaccinated. It's not something that I just come to the conclusion of, that, oh, hey, you know what? I'm gonna go get vaccinated tomorrow because media is telling me to. I've been through COVID not once, but twice, and second time was a lot worse, and it, it scared me. It's just best to get it versus not getting it. Centennial Bank is committed to you. Since our founding in 1999, we've become one of the nation's most trusted banks by remembering that you come first. By empowering our communities to reach their highest potential through our dedication to local charity, education, and exceptional service. Because we are proud to call Arkansas home. Banking with you in mind. Centennial Bank, member FDIC. To a girls' state championship game, Melbourne leads Bigelow 32 to 15. It's been all Melbourne. They got off to a quick start. I will say Bigelow scored four quick points to tie it up 4-4, but since then, it's been all Melbourne to make it a 17-point lead already. Looking at the stats, pretty impressive. Six of 16 for Melbourne. Bigelow has yet to make a three. They've only taken one. Their emphasis is to get the ball inside. Yep, absolutely. And in 16 minutes of play, Kenley McCarn has 17 points on 6 of 12 shooting. Very impressive first half for Kenley McCarn. Well, McCarn, we knew, was one to watch. She was averaging 21 points. She's an 88% free throw shooter. She can knock down the three, 44% from the three-point line, and she's showing that in this game. She's making her threes. She's making her shots inside the, the arc. Very impressive. That's the one thing you can say. They're on a 19-4 run right now. Bigelow just continuing to turn it over. And remember for Bigelow, Aubrey Evans was our player to watch. She also averages 20 points a game, but she's 0-4 from the floor. She played all 16 minutes in the first half and has not scored. So Bigelow will have to get her going if they're going to make some sort of second half run against uh, Melbourne. All right, we'll be back in a few minutes for second half action. Stick around. This is the Centennial Bank State Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Over 2,500 team members across 17 local electric distribution co-ops powering homes, farms, and industries somewhere across Arkansas. We are the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Power and people. everyone here we are again it's our halftime show our third game of the day I'm Ed Leon and I'm Julie Thomas stay where you are because we've got some really neat stuff in store for you before we get back to the action Julie I've lived in a lot of places over the years but I gotta say Arkansas really shines in addition to the obvious beauty of the natural state 
the character of the people and what they create is just really special. And we get to highlight that here on Arkansas PBS. Yes, we do. From the unique foodie culture here to the vibrant and inspirational music scene, we work hard to tell the Arkansas stories no one else is telling. Here's an inspiring one from the Arkansas Delta about a group of high school students who sought to heal themselves and find equality in their community through their music. Here's a look at our Emmy Award winning documentary, Rap Squad. We're in the Delta, and the Delta is a very unique and different kind of area. Sometimes in order to understand the Delta, you have to be from the Delta just to kind of understand the culture and the people. The only excitement that you can get is mischief and stuff like that. I've been depressed. I'm actually still depressed, but you see how I come to school and I smile. There's really no option for like the angsty young poet or like the angsty young artist or the angsty young rapper. Ooh, 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 ooh. The kids that are you know, spitting three 16 bar verses on a song won't write an essay in class. Well, then that shows a deeper issue. Maybe they have undealt with trauma. Maybe they're not being dealt with properly. This is our proposed new high school facility that will be constructed here uh, at the Central High School campus if the voters approve the property tax. What we see is an over-the-top proposal, an extreme tax on a poor community. What are we going to do to better our community? No adult, no no government, no nothing's gonna listen to me. Not unless I come out with a big statement. I don't wanna be that one that could have done something. I wanna be that one that did do something. We've neglected the public school system for over 30 years, and now it's coming back to haunt us. You wanna vote for us? And the kids bought the philosophy that art can create change, that art can allow it more expression, that art can help people stand up for themselves. Don't nobody want to see us shine, but bet we gonna shine regardless. Such a great story. And in addition to an Emmy, Rap Squad also earned a National Public Media Award. Great recognition for a wonderful Arkansas story. And like all of our original local content, you can watch Rap Squad anytime on demand. Right, you can find our programs wherever you like to watch, on the PBS video app, on our website, or on our YouTube channel. YouTube TV subscribers can find us there too. And of course, the way you're watching us right now. It's so awesome. There are so many platforms and so much content. Some of our most popular shows are about Arkansas's unique food culture. Food historian and travel writer Kat Robinson has taken us on guided tours of the Arkansas Pike Trail and the tastiest dairy bars in the state. Here's a taste. What makes a dairy bar different from other food establishments? Here in Arkansas, it describes a whole selection of restaurants we love. It's a location that serves ice cream, burgers, or hot dogs, some having been in existence 50 years or more. Come travel with me on a culinary itinerary of Arkansas Dairy Bars. I'm Kat Robinson, and I preach the gospel of Arkansas food. No, really. What I've discovered is that Arkansas has a passion for pie. These are the stories of some of those pies, the people who make them, and the communities from which they hail. Hope you made room for pie. Thank you. So that looks really, really good. <laughs> I've been able to check out some of these stops that Kat recommends and they do not disappoint. The films are Make Room for Pie and Dairy Bars, Neat Eats and Cool Treats and you can watch them both on demand. It's how we bring to life the Arkansas experience. That's right, our local productions, they're Arkansas stories and we love telling them. But you know, we can't tell them without your help. We'd love for you to be part of what we're doing, to sign up and get exclusive sneak peeks at what's headed your way and share your thoughts on what you want more of. Yes, share your voice, add your voice to the conversation. Let's go to Marge Bentley over at the Arkansas PBS Foundation. She's gonna let you know how to do just that. Marge. Thank you, Ed. I know we're short on time, so real quick. All we're asking is that you take a moment and go to our website, myarpbs.org slash sign up. Give us your email address to join the conversation. And if you love what you're watching, text SPORTS to 501-491-0444 and donate $10 to help us bring you many, many more Arkansas stories. Ed and Julie. Thanks, March. Ed, I think we have time for one more clip. We do. 
Check out The Glow with Big Piff. It's our digital series that highlights diverse voices, artists, and entrepreneurs in Arkansas. Here's The Glow. What's going down, y'all? It's Big Piff, the hip hop adventurer, and I'm excited to tell you about my series, The Glow. That there's so much greatness just in who you are, and that's what I try to live my day by. I get to talk to some inspiring creators and entrepreneurs, dig into their inspiration, and see how they let it shine to the world. That I found rhythm and it made sense to me. No, I remember the yeah, specific yeah. day I remember. <laughs> like you remember I like, remember the I'm day. I'm on beat now. The Glow. Tune in on Arkansas PBS. You can check out all six episodes of The Glow On Demand. All right, we are minutes away from the second half, so we are sending you back to Hot Springs for more championship action here on the home of the Arkansas High School Basketball State Finals, Arkansas PBS. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Over 2,500 team members across 17 local electric distribution co-ops, powering homes, farms, and industries somewhere across Arkansas. We are the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Power and people. Welcome back to Bank OZK Arena. I'm Wes Moore. Glad you're with us. Joined by Michael Westbrook. And it's been a first half dominated by Melbourne. And there's your first half stats. In this, I mean, in this case, stats don't lie. 43% shooting for Melbourne, 12 field goals, but it's been the three-pointer. Half of their made baskets, three-pointer, six of 16 from long range. And surprisingly, Bigelow is out rebounding Melbourne. I would not have predicted that with the way Melbourne has pounded the offensive glass, but they've gotten the rebounds when they've needed to for some second chance opportunities. They've played a really good half, good defense, forcing a lot of turnovers. Look at the disparity there. That's the number. 13 turnovers for Bigelow, only three for Melbourne. Yeah, the points off turnovers, even worse for Bigelow, it's 19-0. It's hard to win ball games that way. Oh, this is a 17-point game. There's a, the big difference right there. The pressure on Bigelow out front has been just uh, difficult for them to deal with. They've tried uh, different players uh, bringing the ball up the court, and they've uh, they've had some success, I would say, with uh, Willingham. She's been able to break through and get a couple of layups, but honestly, they just haven't been able to get into their offense, and they want to because they have an advantage there with the size of their post players, but they just can't get the ball, work it down low to their post players. It puts so much pressure on you when you're having to take eight, nine, ten seconds to get the ball just to half court. That really wears on you. We'll see if Bigelow has some fresh legs coming out of the halftime locker room. They're going to need it in the second half. Bigelow has gone to his own defense here. The car breaks it inside out, wide open three, rattles out, bounces around, and Bigelow finally gets the rebound. And that's a, that's a good decision there. While they have made six threes, they've missed six. So set up in that zone, maybe see how they're going to shoot early on in the third and, and see if you can get a couple of quick possessions after their misses. The goal is to get it inside to 23 and 13. Problem's been they hadn't been able to get the ball even to the wings. Wilson with a rebound. One of the smallest players on the court. She was fighting. She's done that so far four times. That was her fifth rebound, her first offensive rebound. Drop Weaver. Melbourne works it inside to McCarn. McCarn will take a little 12-footer. That's just so smooth. If you're just tuning in, she's been doing that the entire game. She is just a junior, but she can go. You can just tell she's very athletic, has great touch. She can handle the basketball. 5'10". She's going to be playing somewhere in college. Yeah, absolutely. And her mom was a college athlete, played basketball at Arkansas Monticello. Her dad was the quarterback there, so they've got uh, they've got some college athletes in their family, and and uh, the older sister and younger I sister. I expect to see both of them playing uh, in college someday. We'll see Caitlin here in just a second. We've seen uh, a lot of Kinley working inside. It's stolen. Another steal for Melbourne. So that last possession, they cut McCorn inside. That's what you have to do against the zone. Now she's outside, lets it fly. One, two, three, as simple as that. She's got 22. 22 of their 37. She has 22, Bigelow has 15. It's really hard to stop that when she's scoring in the paint. It's hard to talk about <laughs> Bigelow with their defense. McCard 
and company just steal after steal after steal. I'm going to look it up now. There are 15 turnovers for Bigelow. They don't allow much time for a color commentator, do they, with the way they get the basketball back so quickly? The card caught that. She looked. I thought she was going to pull the trigger. They, they are patient, though. Yeah, that, they turn down threes. They do. That goes back to what we were saying. <laughs> she doesn't. <laughs> Good hustle. Bigelow comes up with the loose ball, though. Here comes Will Willingham. She gives it up. Wilson with it. Got a Bigelow player on the ground. They're going to let him play on. Thought we had another steal, but that's one of those the Bigelow fans were saying, finally, finally, we get a call. And the Melbourne fans were like, what'd she do? She was just stealing the ball. She was taking it away. Saw a total of three fouls in the first half. There were very few whistles. It was a quick 16 minutes of basketball. There you go. Card with the steal. Fake like she's going to take a three and finds her teammate inside for the basket and the foul. Give McCard an assist. What a heads up play that time. And now Haley Skidmore will go to the free throw line. I think that play right there shows her basketball IQ. Like you said, it looked like she was going to take the three, hesitated just long enough, understanding that her, she'd have a teammate somewhere. There was one right at the rim for her. Bigelow having a hard time just getting the ball in bounds. Starks open on the wing. They get it to her. Now she's looking inside. She wants to get it to Evans if possible. Evans posting up. Wilson rolls to the basket, kicks it outside. Open three. Good. Exactly what Bigelow needed. Allison Weaver knocks it down. Yeah, they definitely needed some points. Their first points of the second half. Melbourne was on an 8-0 run. Bigelow almost got the steal. Weaver called for the foul. Melbourne will throw it in underneath the goal. They've increased their lead to 22, 8-3 here in the third quarter. Great inbounds play that gets McCarden an open look. She's been so impressive when she misses now. I'm thinking, what's wrong? Yeah. Yeah. Those yeah. seem automatic. She's, you know, from the 12, 15 foot range, she's been almost automatic. Wilson gets by her defender. She pulls up off the glass. Shooters touch and gets it to go. She gets her second basket of the game. Six rebounds and four points. McCarn forces it but gets the foul, kind of a push in the back. She'll go to the free throw line. Yeah, a really quick shot fading away from the basket. You got McCarn is an 88% free throw shooter. No shooter, no uh, announcer's jinx right there. And I should look down at my notes a little more often. I was talking about her playing in college. Well, she's already committed to UT Martin, so she is going to play some big-time college basketball after this year. And that one rims out. Big one gets down the floor for the rebound. They can come out of there with it. No numbers. Wilson splits two. Open. Player in the baseline jumper, no good. good. No, but somehow came away with it. I thought Bigelow got the offensive rebound. Kayla McCarn just ripped it from her grasp to take it away from her for yet another steal. Go in the corner, open three, little long. McCarn tips it out of bounds, couldn't quite bring it in. It's going to bring us to our media timeout. Melbourne leads it 41-20. They're up 21. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. Broadcast of this championship game is made possible by the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Over 2,500 team members across 17 local electric distribution co-ops powering homes, farms, and industries somewhere across Arkansas. We are the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Power and people.
Farmers and Merchants Bank and the Bank of Fayetteville share the mission of Arkansas PBS to enrich and empower all Arkansans. Community, dignity, respect. That's what me banking is all about. More at mebanking.com. Hey, if you want a copy of tonight's game, we've got a easy way to find or get it for you. Yeah, for a copy of the state championship games, go to mmproductions.net to place your order. 41 to 20, Melbourne with the lead. They've outscored Bigelow in all three quarters, 13-7 in the first, 19-8 in the second quarter, and here in the third, 9 to 5 advantage. Bigelow has the ball. As impressive as McCarn has been offensively, I think the uh, Melbourne defense has been even more impressive. They've created a lot of turnovers, gotten a lot of steals. Tom Bigelow does a great job of beating the press and trying to set up the offense. No, Wilson's just going to fire him. Get an open look finally. I'm going to take it. Melbourne with the rebound. They're looking to run. McCarn with it. Into the corner, out top, open look for three, splash. Melbourne's draining them now. Abby Lawrence gets into the act. A sophomore, and that's what happens when you have a team that's looking for their fourth consecutive state championship. These younger players proving their worth out there on the floor as well, and they just keep rebuilding and rebuilding, and everybody gets playing time, and they just keep dominating. Wilson working to get it across half court. She does. Tightly defended. This has been all night. Almost loses it. She gets it back, dishes it off. Have a little 18-footer open. Won't go. Bigelow, great job. Good hustle. Gets it in. Saves it to her teammate. There you go, Aubrey Evans. She gets on the scoreboard. She struggled tonight. Hadn't gotten the basket until right there. And I have to say, it's a hard spot to be in if you're Bigelow. 23-5, and five, that's a really, really good year. And you're coming into a game in a, what's been called the David and Goliath. I mean, they're a really good basketball team. Melbourne for another three and got it. They're rolling right now. Abby Lawrence is feeling it. You know, this is Coach Cornette's first year at Bigelow. First year, and he's in the state championship game. He came from Rural Special. I told him, well, now the expectations are pretty high. Shots blocked by McCard. Jeff Gifford, the coach last year, he's now the principal of the school. Give McCard a little bit of a break. Two minutes and two seconds left in the quarter. Straight up, lady. Bigelow gets Rebound it into Evans. Her shot's no good. No. You wonder how many points McCarn could average this year. I imagine she sits a lot in the fourth quarter. 21 and a half points per game. She's already got that average. Melbourne hitting the glass. Bigelow comes out with it. Weaver. Weaver gets it again. Wilson. 10 second violation. That's the first time we've seen that from Melbourne. We've seen plenty of steals. We've seen them create turnovers, but that's the first 10 second violation. It was only a matter of time, really. Now we're getting some substitutes in here in the end of the third quarter. Almost turned it over. Morgan back out top. Skidmore has it. She'll get it over to Morgan. Morgan's three is no good. Good strong rebound from Jenna Starks. Willingham gets it, a big time screen. Oh. It happened right in front of us. You had a good look too. I thought it was just a solid screen. I mean, it was violent, and but I thought she was just standing there. And, and sometimes when a player, we're going to get a good look at it. Well, that's all that's about a bad the call. I mean, she's just standing there. It was a violent hit. She went to the ground, but I mean, she. It's just a hard screen. That's yeah. her teammate's fault for not saying something. She should have given her a heads up. Here comes the screen. You're exactly right. But she hit the court right in front of us, and it was a loud thud, and that's your reaction, I'm sure, for an official that that was an illegal screen. McCarn back in the game. Wasn't out long. Maybe a makeup call right there. <laughs> Thought she was fouled, but no call. And all the way to the basket. Gives it up at the end to Wilson. She can't get it to fall. Evans got the rebound. She was about to travel, so she had to give it up. We'll have a timeout here with 27 seconds left. 
Just another dominant quarter from Melbourne. 15 to 7, they've outscored Bigelow. The leading scorer for Bigelow. And Starks with six. Willingham and Weaver both have five, and Wilson four. So nobody in double digits yet. Honestly, the only player in double digits, it's McCarn with 23. Melbourne doesn't have anybody else in double digits either. Has Bigelow played anybody off the bench? 24 minutes for all five starters. Is that accurate? It is. That's accurate. No one's come in yet. Wow. Well, that's another challenge that they have for them because those players are starting to get worn down as well. Tell you what, they're, uh, they're looking at some of the fans right now. <laughs> but uh, I saw some smiles from the Bigelow huddle right there. They, they, they were talking about something, and, you know, they're, they're down big. They're down 25, and they're still, you know, you, you got to. You got to have fun. This is yeah. a moment you'll always have. You got to cherish it. And I, it's not any fun to lose in a championship game, but at least I saw a couple smiles over there. You know, Bigelow was supposed to have even more fans here tonight. They had a couple of buses for the students. They had to cancel the buses because of the snow. Wow. And Coach was hopeful that they would uh, be able to get here uh, on their own, but uh, he said, I, I'm afraid that's going to hurt our attendance. But i tell you what, for a two-way game, uh, it's a nice – a two-way game with it snowing outside, some good attendance. Yes, it is. Evans runs into some traffic there, and I drove through the snow coming down here. Thought they might wait for the final shot, but they thought they saw something in transition there. And even the, the Bigelow student section, you know, they were cheering too. And it's You're in Hot Springs, state championship game, like you said. Got to have some fun with it. Three, right before the buzzer, no good. See if Bigelow can get off a shot. You've got six seconds if they hurry. I don't know that they have that much time, and they're not going to. Yeah, they do get it off. Oh, and it hit the front of the rim. Look good for a second. I was afraid that Weaver wasn't going to get it off in time, but she does. But it's no good. And Bigelow trails by 25 as we head to the fourth quarter. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. It's natural to be concerned with our kids' safety. But when they're riding the school bus, we shouldn't have to be. Illegally passing a school bus puts our children's lives at risk. That's why Everett is joining area schools to promote the Flashing Red Kids Ahead Safety Program. School bus safety is everyone's responsibility. Do your part. Always stop when you see the flashing red lights of a school bus. Children's lives depend on it. Remember, Flashing Red, Kids Ahead. For every moment, for every memory, from that first car to your first home, to your first child and all the highs and lows that tomorrow might bring for everything that matters most to you and your family there's someone right around the corner dedicated to helping you protect what you love your local farm bureau insurance agent farm bureau insurance real service real people Coming up on the Arkansas PBS Post Game Show, hosted by Steve Sullivan, we'll meet folks who always rock the best kicks, learn about the groundbreaking Betty Wallace, and take a peek at the Arkansas PBS All-Stars from the 1A and 2A divisions. Eight minutes to go in this 2A girls championship game between Bigelow and Melbourne. Melbourne just seven minutes, 50 seconds away from celebrating yet another title and extending their winning streak another game. Impressive, coming in looking for their fourth consecutive title. I was talking to their radio announcer who is there in his seventh year, Blake Smith, and I said, are you all set up before the game? He said, I know where my spot is the last four years. Melbourne with another steal. McCard with it, gets a lot of attention. She dishes it off to the corner, no good. Wilson with another rebound. Wilson gives it up to Willingham. She gets it across half court. She finds Weaver. Wilson will take a three and hit it. Emma Wilson. You're, you're working here to make this manageable. Put together a few good passes, hit a couple of shots, try to get it a little bit closer, and just protect the basketball in this fourth quarter is what Bigelow needs to do. Well, McCarn answers. You got a three. I got a three. She increases the lead, makes it back to 25. Bigelow trying to get it across half court. Finally do. Weaver with it. She looks inside. 
Finds a cutter. Shot's no good. Evans was trying to get a shot off, but it's just kind of too far underneath the basket. And Melbourne just keeps burying them. From one McCarr to another, that's Caitlin with the three. How many times have they practiced that in the driveway? <laughs> <laughs> too many to count. Wilson across half court. She gets it in the corner to Weaver. But Wilson is going to take it. They're going to look inside. That's just a difficult pass. Weaver gets it off the rim. Five forty-five to go. Hey, hey, one, that job. It's a twenty-eight point lead. I we think get a basket here. It's a thirty-point lead in the fourth quarter. We get a running clock. And you've seen that once already in the tournament. You're wondering it had been quite a while. We might see it twice in the first two days. We were trying to wonder, figure out the last time we saw it in a boys' game, and it's been a long time. We've seen it in a yeah. couple of girls' games over the years, but for a boys' game. It's been a while. That sportsmanship roller are up by 30 in the fourth. The clock runs except for at the media timeout. McCarn just got tripped up. No, that wasn't McCarn. Excuse me. That was Kaylee Love. She gets tripped up. It was Bigelow's fifth team foul, so no free throws yet. Last time they ran a play from McCarn that was well designed and very well executed. They do it again. Kind of missed her. McCarn not couldn't get the rebound. That was a, a good job from Weaver. Weaver blocking out, kept McCarn off the glass. Willingham with it. Winning Willingham all the way to the basket, and she's fouled. Love was called for the foul. Willingham was working her jaw. She got hit. Oh, she got hit across the cheek. She shakes it off and rouses it home. It'll be six point for Willingham. She's now two for three from the free throw line. Knocks them both down. It's a hard earned two when you get knocked across the face. I think she was moving her jaw there a little bit. Probably sore from that one. 11 three pointers for Melbourne. That's been the difference here today. I know it's been a lot about the defense, but talking offense, 11 three pointers, that's 33 of their 53 points. Carn goes baseline. She's looking for a teammate. Gets deflected. Good hands that time from Evans. Willingham goes down the ground. Going to get a foul called on Melbourne. No, just Melbourne's player was out of bounds when she touched the ball. So that's a turnover for Melbourne. One of the few turnovers. Yep, just the fourth turnover for Melbourne. They have just done a great job. I mean, taking care of the ball, shooting the ball, stealing the ball. I guess there's a reason why they're going for the fourth straight state championship. Here they are again, coming up with another takeaway. McCarn. Gets it to the other McCarn now. They're going to run a little weave. Pull up and try to knock down the three. McCarn's there for the offensive rebound. Throws it back out top to a teammate. No one was there, but they'll chase it down. I'll tell you, Wes, without a shot clock, it's basically a running clock anyways right now, even though they're not at that 30 points. We've seen very few fouls in this game, and uh, there haven't been a lot of just bad passes. There's just been steals for the turnovers, and then there you go again, and adds to her totals. McCarr now with 29. Six of nine from the three-point line. That's a pretty good average, 66%. How often do you see a team who's made 20 field goals, 12 of them are three-pointers, the majority of their shots coming from behind the arc? You told me she was committed to go where? UT Martin. Well, she just got 30. That's 31. And coach just made the signal. We may be getting ready to uh, empty the bench here with three minutes and 24 seconds to go. Yep, sure enough, here they come. Next time out will be a media timeout, and they'll pull their seniors and start celebrating. Good cut to the basket. They find Evans that time. Evans now has four points. And coach is going to go ahead and call a timeout. He wants to get him out of the game. He wants to get his reserves a chance to get in the game. We'll take a break with him. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. It's natural to be concerned with our kids' safety, but when they're riding the school bus, we shouldn't have to be. Illegally passing a school bus puts our children's lives at risk. That's why Everett is joining area schools to promote the flashing red Kids Ahead safety program. 
School bus safety is everyone's responsibility. Do your part. Always stop when you see the flashing red lights of a school bus. Children's lives depend on it. Remember, flashing red, kids ahead. Hands up, hands up, hands up, hands up, hands up, hands up. Let me see it, let me see it. Bounce, 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 bounce. 58-29, our score, Melbourne. Well, after the third quarter into the fourth, if a team leads by 30 points or more, the clock runs unless there's a timeout or an injury, and we're one point away from that right now, Wes, with 3.05 to play. Well, Bigelow has the ball. I thought they were, they did. They took out some of their starters, but not all of their starters because McCarn is still in the game. And McCarn's going to the basket. She dumps it off. They're going to run their offense a little bit. I'm okay with that. She's a senior. She scored 31 points. I think you leave her out there as the veteran leader that she's been. It looks like two more subs set to check in. So she got one or two more possessions, probably about to come out. That way she can kind of get a standing ovation from her home crowd, I would imagine. Weaver misses the three, but Melbourne's there for the rebound. Working around the outside. Here's a three-point shot, a tip. It is good. Look at that from Ashton Kimball. And their radio announcer telling me two seniors on this team, Cornelius and McCarn. So, you know, now's here's the chance. McCarn with basically an intentional foul to stop the clock. And you see the hugs now. She's going to go over and high five her coaches. Gets a big hug. Great career comes to an end. And that's Cornelius, the other senior as well. So he gets the two seniors out of the game. So they don't know what it's like to lose a state championship or not to win a state championship. They're four for four now, right, as a senior that's, class. That's, that's right. That's really incredible. In fact, the seniors, this will be 112 wins, five losses. Well, the question needs to be asked, what happened in those five games? I, I actually thought about going to look up the games they lost, but a couple, a couple of them were out of state. So... Yeah, I don't know exactly how many were in-state, but I know for sure a couple of them were out-of-state games. Maybe I can remember to ask Coach T here in a few minutes. Five losses in four years for these seniors. Bigelow at the line. And shooting two. First one's no good for Jenna Starks. Look at the replay. Starks was fouled on the shot attempt. She makes her second free throw. Starks three for four from the field. Gives her seven points. She's tied for, with Wilson and Willingham as the uh, high point total for Bigelow. All three have seven. Final minute of the game. Bigelow, little 15 foot jump on that was pure. Morgan knocks it down. Remember we said they were scoring 59 a game, giving up 31. <laughs> <laughs> they met the average, and uh, they're going to uh, better their average on defense. They'll be able to run out the clock here. Last 20 seconds. So this is win number how many in a row? 66. 66 wins in a row. That is hard to put in perspective. What's easy to put in perspective is four straight state championships. You can go ahead and put it in the books. Melbourne. Gets it done. This time, 63 to 30, make it four in a row. <laughs> Smiles and tears on the Melbourne sideline. What a career for Kinley McCarn. Some big hugs right there. The coach is even tearing up. Can't wait to get Coach Teague on here in a few minutes. We'll take a break. More celebration. We'll hear from Coach Teague, and I'm guessing Kinley McCarn will be the tournament MVP. Stick around. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. This month on Arkansas PBS. Meandering through the southern half of Arkansas, Bayou Bartholomew holds the distinction of being the longest bayou in the world. 
consumer DNA testing used by millions, but the results can be life-changing. From outwitting rattlesnakes to aerial feats, cast of cheeky characters will reveal the secret to Squirrel's success. Only on Arkansas PBS. Welcome back to Baco ZK Arena, and there you see Coach Eric Teague. He's done it again. Melbourne's done it again. They went 63 to 30 over Bigelow. Bigelow knew coming into this game it was going to be a tough task, a very tough task. Their coach even said, look, this is David versus Goliath. He was very proud of his girls and uh, the fact that they made it to the state championship game. It was the first time Bigelow had been to the finals since 1975. They lost that game, so they have still not won a state championship, but he was very proud of this team. And you can see, of course, it's tough to lose, and there's some tears over there with Bigelow, but they're very proud of what they did. And some nice smiles right there as they accept uh, the uh, trophy. And it's been a very good year for Bigelow Sports. You know, their football team was uh, very good. They, it was a little controversial loss they had late in the playoffs, but they had a wonderful team the last two years, and now the basketball, the girls' basketball team, a great run for Bigelow, and I know the town is very proud of them. And now over to Melbourne as they get the trophy and hoist it high in the air. 31 points for Kinley McCorn, 11 of 20 from the floor, 6 of 9 from three-point range, 3 of 4 from the free-throw line. More points than minutes played. Played 29 minutes, scores 31 points, had three assists, three blocks, and two steals to go with four rebounds. Yeah, a couple of those assists were nice. I mean, I, I think back to the one where she pulled up on the fast break to shoot a three, and I was thinking in my mind, wow, that's that's a, that's aggressive. But she drew the defender out and just dumped it inside to a wide-open teammate. And there she is. She's been announced as the state tournament MVP. She's getting the trophy now, and soon she'll be headed over our way and be joining us here courtside. I'll tell you, Abby Lawrence hit all three three-pointers that she took. She's the second leading scorer with nine points. Caitlin McCorn had eight and five for Skidmore, two from Morgan. But really, those Lawrence threes, 13 total three-pointers made by Melbourne. What a performance. 21 turnovers for Bigelow, and you take a look at the steal column. 13 steals for Melbourne. Caitlin McCarn led the way with four steals. Uh, also, uh, we had uh, Skidmore and Love with some steals. We see McCarn coming over. Well, Coach is going to come over to us first. We're going to bring Eric Teague in here and let him join us. Coach, congratulations. Uh, well, this doesn't you. get old, I know, right? No, it doesn't, but it's been exhausting this year, I'll tell you. Pressure. How much pressure to do it again, 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 and then again? You, you know, uh, we didn't have the pressure on us at the first of the year this year. The expectations as far as everybody else was not very high for us. You know, we lost five of our top six players. But once we started winning, then that pressure started getting there. That undefeated season, once you get to 25-0 and 0 or so, the kids started getting a little pressure, but they held together real well. Was that even harder, the winning streak? Is that pressure even tougher? No, I couldn't hear you. The winning streak itself, the number of wins in a row, is that even a, a bigger thing on the, their mind? You know, mind? we didn't really think about it a lot. You know, people would mention it. But our kids didn't worry about that, and, and neither did I. I mean, it, that, that's not important right now. The important is what these kids have done this year. Coach, 31 points from Kinley McCorn. Talk about your MVP and then the rest of your team as well. Well, she's been amazing all year long. Um, you know, when we need points for trouble scoring, she's there. I mean, she's, she's going to pick up some tough buckets. But our other girls, this is probably the best defensive team I've ever coached. And I mean, they love playing defense, and that's what they've done. And it's they're unselfish. And if one guy's not having a good good night, you know, the other guy picks it up, and they're not, you know, jealous of each other. I spoke with Coach Cornette before the game, and he said that's what he was most worried about was your defense. And he was trying to explain it to me, and I was like, I can't wait to see this. So, and it was, it was as impressive as he said. It's it's tenacious. I mean, they it, they had a hard time just bringing the ball up the court because your girls' speed and defensive tenacity. We get after it. I mean, we like to stay in front of somebody. We want to pressure them and make them put the ball on the ground. And then we know how to switch real well. I mean, if they throw a screen at us, we're switching. And, and we know how our rotations. So, you know, we just do a great job communicating. Coach, thank you. Congratulations. Thank you so much. 
Congratulations, Coach. We're going to bring in the uh, tournament MVP now. Give uh, just a second for Kenley McCarn to get in here. Are those tears? Are you happiness? What, what, is, uh, what is that? I don't really know how I feel right now. <laughs> it's pretty sad that it was my last game, but, I mean, I've known since my ninth grade year that this is where we were expected to be, so it's kind of a big relief that we've accomplished it. <laughs> so you've not lost four state championships. The seniors, you and Cornelius, 112 wins in your career. Yep. An amazing accomplishment. What does it say about the mentality of winning for Melbourne? Uh, we clearly don't like to lose. <laughs> We're going to play our guts out and do everything we absolutely can. We try to not take anybody for granted. And if we play as hard as we can, everything usually works out. <laughs> you only had five losses in four years. Do you remember those five? Do you know who, who uh, came? Yes, I do. <laughs> really last year because our only loss was to Paragould or we would have gone undefeated, which I think that was our biggest uh, accomplishment this year because no one's ever done that in Melbourne so we got undefeated and that's kind of our own accomplishment <laughs> and now the pressure's on your sister to keep it going yeah you're going to keep her you know get, put a little pressure they'll on her give her a hard up. time they'll all do good I know they will <laughs> how's it feel you've got a minute now to think about it it feels good <laughs> really good <laughs> congratulations thank you Congratulations. Great job it was fun watching you play Melbourne gets it done 63 30 your final score one down, one more to go. We've got another 2A championship getting ready to start up in a few minutes. Magnet Cove will take on Lavaca. We'll talk about that when we come back. Stick around. This is the Centennial Bank State Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. <laughs> 